right, I am looking at three books that came out this week, all tying into War of the Realms. So there's War of the Realms number two, written by Jason Aaron, art by Russell Donnerman, as well as the Punisher tie-in book and the War Scrolls tie-in book. So uh, kicking it off... Last issue, we had Malachi attacking Midgard Earth with the Frost Giants as well as the uh, Dark Elves and the uh, Angels of Heaven, the Warrior Angels of Heaven. So they're all attacking Midgard. And uh, this issue, we pick up on that action. So the Avengers are in New York and they're fighting everybody. Dark Elves, the Frost Giants, etc. Everyone is trying to herd all of these civilians into the Sanctum Centorium, which is uh, Doctor Strange's uh, base. And they're trying to herd everybody in there so, so uh, Doctor Strange can sort of do some sort of spell and teleport everyone to safety. So while this is going on, various fighting is happening. Various characters are talking to Wolverine about how he is back from the dead and they all thought he was dead because he's been dead in Marvel continuity for like a year recently. So Punisher mentions this as well as uh, Iron Fist as well. Uh, Odin, he makes his triumphant return back to Earth. We thought he potentially died last issue because it looked like he got stabbed a whole bunch of times, but he is in fact alive and he has this sort of epic entrance where he's like riding these uh, animals and there's uh, various other people with him. And I thought the artwork looked amazing here when, when they have the reveal of him. So Doctor Strange, he's doing his spell to sort of teleport everyone away, but he does something wrong with the spell and he teleports too many people away. So the Avengers and the various allies all get teleported to safety as well, but they're no longer in the battle in New York. So Malachi is kind of free to sort of take over the city. So when the Avengers and everyone are now in safety, uh, Freya, who's Thor's mom, she's talking to Jane Foster, and she is saying that, you know, Odin, the Allfather, potentially might not re recover. You know, right now he has to go in the Odin sleep to sort of recover from all of his wounds. And Freya might potentially not come back from the upcoming war. So she decides to make Jane Foster the new Allmother, which is sort of an interesting development there. She says that Jane Foster, because of her wisdom, uh, which is something that is most imperative for the you know, survival of all the Asgardians, and uh, that's sort of why she's choosing Jane Foster. And uh, this issue ends with Malachi looking to uh, kill this Brunhilde girl who is this other Asgardian and the last uh, page looks like he's killing her. But of course, all these Asgardians often come back to life. Overall, I thought this issue was pretty good. Uh, I like the bombastic action. I liked the artwork. I think we're progressing this event comic pretty nicely. One negative is that I don't love Jane Foster, and I feel like Jason Aaron loves Jane Foster more than anyone else loves Jane Foster, and he loves using her way more than I would prefer he use her. But neither the less, I still thought this issue was pretty fun. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Let's jump into the Punisher tie-in now. War of the Realms, The Punisher, number one, written by Jerry Duggan, art by Marcelo Fiera. So uh, this is a tie-in to the overall War of the Realms storyline going on. This one's focusing on The Punisher, and it's kind of dumb, I must say, but it is dumb fun, very fun stuff. So in this issue, The Punisher, he's fighting some of these Dark Elves, and uh, these Dark Elves are riding these crazy huge wolves or something. And a Punisher, he's throwing, you know, grenades at the Frost Giant's legs. And the action in this comic is just pretty brutal and really exciting. Eventually, Punisher comes across this hospital where these people need to be evacuated and moved to this better hospital that sort of is still functioning and it's in New Jersey. But in order to get to New Jersey, they would have to travel on foot through the Lincoln Tunnel which of course would be pretty dangerous in this whole war zone going on right now. So Frank agrees to help and he uh, finds a bus transporting a whole bunch of convicts and he uh, recruits these convicts, you know, to uh, band with him and help him clear out the Lincoln Tunnel and get these people to safety because, you know, these convicts are kind of sitting ducks in this bus that's been broken down. So Punisher, you know, he's going to use them for his cause. And that is sort of the cliffhanger where we end this issue on. 
overall, I thought this story was a lot of filler. I didn't think the characterization of the Punisher was that on point, but it was really fun. It was fun seeing Punisher uh, taking on all of these crazy bad guys. So that was a good time. And it's going to be kind of interesting to see, uh, you know, how they clear out the Lincoln Tunnel and uh, fight through whatever's going to be in there. But by no means is this an essential issue. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Jumping over to the uh, War Scrolls now. This one had uh, a few short stories in here. One was with Howard the Duck. Another one was with like Volstag and uh, they're fighting various people. And then there's one with Wolverine and Punisher. But I think the only positive story in here that I enjoyed was uh, involving Daredevil. So uh, it starts off and they jump back in time a bit and it's when Daredevil met Thor for the first time and they have this very interesting interaction because uh, Thor you know is a god and to Daredevil to Matt Murdock who's a devout Catholic you know there's only one true god to him so Matt Murdock doesn't really feel comfortable with the way Thor and his whole pantheon of gods sort of throw around the god word uh, so often. There's also Kingpin, and Kingpin, you know, he's the mayor of New York right now, and he gets captured by Malachi, and he, he, they're going to use uh, Kingpin for something in f future issues. And then eventually, Daredevil, somehow, Daredevil, he has the sword of Hemidal, and he gets imbued with that power, and he is now the all-seeing guardian of the Rainbow Bridge, and he can operate the Bifrost and transport people. So we don't know how he got this sword, but that's sort of like an interesting power, because normally Hemi Dow, you know, he has this vision, he can see everything, but now, you know, Daredevil's blind, so how is that going to work? I don't know, and it's but whatever, and it's pretty badass that uh, Daredevil is holding that that sword there. So yeah, that was okay. So yeah, I would give this issue a six out of ten. I enjoyed the Daredevil story, but the rest of them I felt weren't very important. And the Daredevil story is going to be followed up on in uh, War of the Realms number three anyway, so it's by no means essential. So yeah, that is all the War of the Realms books that are out so far. We'll have to see where they go from here. Mm -hmm.